Welcome to another installment of this 15-minute Bible study that I've been doing during this time of the coronavirus. We can't be together on Wednesdays, so this is a way of trying to keep us connected. Last week, if you were watching, I answered the question, what English translation of the Bible should I use? From time to time, people will ask that question, and it's a good question to ask. There are a lot of translations out there. And we're a little bit confused about which one should I use. I talked a little bit last week about the idea of why there's so many languages. Went to Genesis 11.1. God confused the languages there. We talked about a couple places where interpreting had to be done from one language to another. Today I want to take some time to look at a couple passages of Scripture that encourage us that this, whatever version we choose, we have a copy of God's Word. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Apostle Paul was writing the last copy of any letter that we have from him, and he was writing... Timothy, a young man he had trained on being a pastor and a leader. And he was encouraging him and encouraging all of us that the Scriptures are exactly what God wants us to have. And knowing that, as you pick your translations, which one you're going to use, you've got that encouragement. Let me look at another one. This is found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20-21. through 21. Peter says, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Now this is a verse, what's so exciting about this is the word picture behind this. The word picture of these men being carried along by the Holy Spirit, it's a word picture that well, imagine a, a sailing ship that goes by, and you see the sails are up, and they are, they are pushing it forward. Well, what's pushing it forward? Something you can't see. It's the wind. The wind hits the sails, and it moves the ship forward. That's what took place when the men wrote in Scripture, God was moving them forward by the Holy Spirit. This is something to remember. It's not that the men were inspired, but the Word is what was inspired. So when we read the Scriptures, we are reading exactly what the Holy Spirit would have us read. So that is a big encouragement. But now let's talk about how to choose what type of Bible, what translation we want to use. The answer is getting a little more difficult because there's so many of them. I mean, for 350 years, the King James Version dominated the entire English known world. Uh, then in 1960 and on, we started getting different kinds of English translations. And then it got to be a little more difficult. I mean, when I was a kid, if you wanted to get a Bible, you could get any Bible you wanted as long as the cover was black and the words were King James Version. That's it. There wasn't any choice. You just knew what to buy. Now there's almost 200 English versions. So how do you pick from all these groupings, what do you pick as the right one? So let's take some time to think through this and see how can we decide which translation might be the best. Attached to the email that I sent out, and it should be on your screen here in just a moment, there are three guides that help you understand the philosophy behind translations, why they do what they do, and how we can understand it better. Look, if you would, at the Quick Reference Guide to English Bible Translations. There's four questions on that page. If you would look through it just real quickly, what are the original languages of the Bible? And it talks about Hebrew and Greek. And there are a few passages that are Aramaic. They're found in Ezra and Ezekiel. If you remember from last week's study, that was the language of the Persians. And while they were in captivity, some people started taking up that language. Why are there so many different Bible translations is the second question. And I really like this because it gives you the philosophies behind why translate. Number one, word for word. The second philosophy is thought for thought. So if you try to go word for word, do you think you'll understand it? 
if it's thought for thought, are we being sure that we're accurate? And what you find out is, yes, we are. In fact, look at the next graph that's up on the screen there. These are also attached to the prayer list I'm sending out. It says Bible translations, and it talks about the two approaches on the left, word for word, thought for thought. And this is what's really helpful. Look at the bottom there. You see that graph? It shows you the different versions of the Scripture, and it gives you an idea where do they fall on this line between word for word and thought for thought. But here's what I want us to understand. Each translation uses both ideas, word for word, thought for thought. But you can see which one leans harder to one direction than the other. Then there's a third graph that we've included, and this is just a different way of looking at it. It says literal versus readable. And I don't know if it should be versus. I would say literal and readable. But anyway, it shows the different translations and where they fall on that graph. This just gives you a way of saying, how do I even know what, why one translation is different from the other? This has been very helpful. And if you can't pull those up, we have copies here if you'd like to have some of those. So, let's move into why do we pick the translations we pick. Well, first of all, I want you to understand, it is extremely difficult translating from one language to another. Because we don't use the same words, and trying to get a thought across, and even to try to get feelings across, that's very difficult. You probably have heard at one point that the New Testament was written in Greek. And just as an illustration, there are four different words for love in the Greek language. In English, there's just one. I love hot dogs. I love my wife. What are we doing? So what we have to find out is how do we get those thoughts across? The second thing about translating is it's very difficult to be exact while also being understood. And that's why you see the different languages and different translations trying to help us understand how do we pick the translation that's just right for us. But we want it accurate and we want it understood. Do you realize that some missionaries go to people who don't even have a written language? They have to develop an alphabet and then translate the scripture into that new language. There's a third thing you need to know about translations is none of them are perfect. Nothing that man does is going to be perfect. It's a miracle at all that we even have a translation in our own heart language. English versions are ones that are helping us understand how can I understand what God says to me in a language I really get. So it's a miracle we even have it. I think we need to show respect for that. Show respect for the fact that we have Scripture in our own language. You realize that men and women have died so that we could have translation in our own language? Do you realize there's countries in the world where you can't take a Bible in? It's illegal. You'll do jail time. Missionaries can't hand out scriptures. There are churches in countries today that have one Bible for the entire church. I've got five copies on my office at home. I've got ten copies here at my church office. We need to show respect for the fact that we even have one in our own language. Here's another thing I want you to understand is a lot of times we have emotion attached to particular versions of the Bible. For instance, King James Version. If you grew up on that, it's hard to get away from it. All of my memorization of, of, of uh, Scripture is in King James. It's just what I learned. I still had the Bible my grandmother gave me as a child. I still had the Bible that my church gave me when I graduated from high school. I still have the Bible that Debbie gave me the Christmas after I accepted Christ as Savior, and I used it for 25 years. She gave me another one in 2006 when I went over to the New International Version. We keep these Bibles and we use these Bibles a lot of times because of the emotional attachment we have to it. So back to the original question. Which translation of the Bible should I use? Which English translation? You need to realize that the Bible is still the number one bestseller in the United States, and it is every year. Forty million copies 
of the English translation will be sold this year alone in the United States. That's not counting overseas sales. When you look in the very first part of your Bible, and there's pages there you probably never have looked at, it will tell you how they translated, who translated it, which groups of people were used to translate it. All of this is trying to help us understand why did that English version say what it said. Like mine's a New International Version. The King James Version is the number one seller. New, An New International Version is the second. But there's something interesting. Every time that a Bible is edited, they update the language. In fact, pull out your King James Version Bible. If you believe that that's the only one we should use, I want to challenge you to do something. I want you to get online and I want you to Google John 3.16 in the original Old English 1611 Bible. You won't be able to read it. They spelled words different. You won't be able to pronounce it. The point is, even the King James in English has been updated throughout the years. Sometimes when I read the NIV in church, other people are saying, my NIV doesn't read like yours. It's because it's another edition. And they update it based on latest understandings of archaeological finds. And some of the best minds are going through there and updating it along with English stylists to make sure that we're still putting it in the heart language of God's people. Always look at who published that Bible version. You, you will have confidence if your Bible was published by Holman or Zondervan or Crossway that's who did uh, the English Standard Version. Tyndale, Nelson, Oxford. You can guarantee that those translations are going to be very, very good. Even if they're in different types, different forms, you can have confidence that those things are translated well. I also found out that new Bible sales are not so much driven by new English versions that have come out, but by study Bibles that have come out. The first Bible I got, Debbie bought me when I was first saved, is the same Bible that the guy who showed me how to be saved used. It was a new Schofield. First study Bible I ever had. Then I got a Chris Walsh study Bible. Then I got an NIV study Bible. Then the ESV study Bible. And recently I bought an ESV where R.C. Sproul has put his comments at the bottom of it. Tony Evans coming out with a Bible with his study notes. So it's not that it's new versions of the Bible, but the study notes by different individuals or groups that you respect. The Bible is still God's Word. The Bible is still designed for heart change. Instead of being maybe too overwhelmed with which one to choose, get settled on one and then take the time to read it study it, and have confidence that what you're reading is exactly what God wants you to see. And He will take that Word and He will change your life. It reminds me of the Vacation Bible School Pledge to the Bible. A Pledge to the Bible, God's Holy Word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. So in the end, Pick one. Let it change your life. Thanks for being here. I hope this has been helpful. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the amazing fact that we have your word written in our language in so many versions. Thank you for the men and women who have put years of their life into translating and then putting study notes into our scriptures. Father, help us to have confidence that your spirit has guided the direction of editors, translators, throughout the centuries to make sure that what we have in our hands is exactly what we need from you. Help us, Lord, to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.